The Vatican is secretly preparing for the arrival of alien saviors. For several years now, Jesuit astronomers have been posturing themselves and their church for alien disclosure, speaking openly about life on other planets. and indoctrinating these aliens into Catholic doctrine, even declaring if given the opportunity, they would eagerly baptize aliens. The Vatican's interest in aliens seemed to be a playful fantasy than a serious consideration. But this is a careful, calculated process. Like the boiling frog, the masses are gradually being conditioned for alien disclosure without even realizing it. Eventually, they will say that Jesus was a extraterrestrial and that, that life was seeded on this planet by a superior race of beings thousands of years ago. They may even produce documents and artifacts that have been locked away into the archives to prove their claim. I'm talking about the greatest deception in history, and many Christians are going to fall for it because it'll be cunningly integrated into a biblical context and backed up with physical evidence. Millions around the world are anticipating the arrival of aliens. It has become a religion and is growing like wildfire. Currently, there's a major push for the arrival of alien saviors from a documentary called Gaia. It explains how the Anunnaki aliens came from the heavens and mixed their gene with mankind and ruled as kings until a great flood destroyed their civilization. Like our cultures, they also have a premonition that these Anunnaki aliens will return again and mix their gene with mankind yet again, and re-establish their empire also. This cult teaches you how to channel spirits through yoga, etc., opening that third eye. And its teachings teach you self-worth, pride, and spiritual healings. These archaeologists and scientists are deceivingly and purposely painting what already had been laid thousands of years ago on the plains of China, using our cultures for their agenda. The foundations of this up-and-coming great deception was laid thousands of years ago. Like I previously said in my video, that the birth of all myths and legends was birthed out of Babylon under a Assyrian king called Nimrod and his wife, Semiramis, where the creation of mankind and the creation of our universe was taken from God and was credited to these fallen angels, the gods, and their demi-children, the Nephilim. If you want to change somebody's world view, you just don't come out of the gate with an argument that opposes everything they believe. You would use the Fabian word for gradualism. You would send out these little softballs like, if there was aliens. Little by little, they've changed that now to saying, it's very possible that there are aliens and that they are now considered more superior than us, bringing forth a false message of the Godhead and the Gospel. In the same very manner, we the people from birth 
powers to be in high places are using this very same technique of gradualism and are conditioning all of us of what's to come. The return of the Anunnaki aliens. In our cultures, the return of the gods. In our Bibles, the return of the fallen angels. The loosening of the fallen angels that were imprisoned for creating such demigods in the first place. They are conditioning us to have sympathy for the devil, sympathy for gay rights, and currently a sympathy for transgender. Now you can be either either, male or female. We can see outside the square where all this is leading us, just like it was in the days of Noah. I want to grab your attention to show you how deceiving and broad these Nephilims are in our everyday lives. A tiny glimpse seen throughout our cultures, the music industry, the Hollywood industry, our education board, sports, technology, our days and months, planets and the retail industry and so much more, and a very broad understanding to how Satan is truly the God of this world until the coming of Jesus, and that we, the children of the light and not of the dark, are not to be of this world. Nephilim among us, obviously the ancients cared about demigods. But surely, modern people have evolved from these modern cults. We name our planets after the Nephilim. We name our days after the Nephilim. We name our months after the Nephilim. We name some chemicals after the Nephilim. We name some continents and some oceans after these Nephilims. Starbucks. What's on the Starbucks cup? You guessed it, Nephilim. It's a siren, half fish and half woman, or half bird or half woman hybrid, that lures sailors to their death with their songs. You can see their evolution on the Starbucks marketing plan on their logo. They just copied a 15th century siren and put it straight onto their logo. But over time, they got a little artistic. She is a Nephilim siren, and here is a siren luring a sailor to his death. She's a hybrid. Versace, what is Versace about? Well, Medusa, with the head of a snake, that will turn you into stone if you look at her. What is she? A hybrid, a Nephilim, a symbol of a popular brand. The biggest sporting event on the planet. It's the biggest event that brings the entire planet together. The Olympics, named after Zeus the Olympian gods who ruled Olympus, which are all Nephilims. In the old days, when they had the Olympics, they would offer Christians as a sacrifice and offerings to the Olympian gods. Nike, manufacturing of sports shoes and clothing, which represents the goddess of victory. She also is a Nephilim. Amazon, a bunch of Nephilims, a race of female warriors whose name meant without breasts. In Greek means a mazos, 
or killer of men. Some of them are hybrids of Aries or Mars. Honda Odyssey is a Greek epic about Ulysses and the ancient hybrid Nephilim that he met. This might sound silly to most, but to these organizations, these names are the faces of their trillion dollar companies. Achilles Tendon is named after a demigod. Achilles, who Brad Pitt played in a movie. He's a hybrid son of the goddess Thetis and Peleus, who is a friend of Hercules. Thetis tried to make him immortal by dipping him in the river Styx. The part by which she held him was his ankle, which was left vulnerable. Paris shot Achilles in the heel and killed him. Today, a person's weakness is called his Achilles heel, which was named after a hybrid, Nephilim. Hollywood just can't get enough of demigods. They made Thor recently an attribute to Norse mythology as a Norse god of Thunderbolt. In ancient days, Thursday used to be called Thor's Day. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of his earlier roles in cinema. He plays Hercules, half god, half human, the son of Zeus and Almini. Hollywood can't get enough of these demigods. People love them, especially our kids. Whether you realize it or not, we are encouraging, leaving our children open for demonic possession a place for the spirits of the Nephilim to rest. Like the spirit of Thor, the spirit of Spider-Man, the spirit of Hulk, or the spirit of the X-Men, who are all reflections of the fallen angels and their demigod children, whose original sole purpose of their existence was to stop the seed of Jesus, enmity which is an abomination before God. High powers and high places want you to think this is ridiculous. This is how deceiving this is. There's only one hero and his name is Jesus. Twilight vampire breeds with a female human to produce hybrids. PlayStation and Xbox are riddled with Nephilim. X-Men genetically engineered superhumans. Hybrid. Hollywood is riddled with hybrids. Here's but a scratch of Nephilims in the Hollywood movie. When aliens come into Hollywood movies, what do they want? They want human genes for manipulation. Tom Cruise in a recent movie called Oblivion. He's a drone repairman. Tech 49 Jack Harper finds his genes have been taken by aliens to create a reprogrammed race of humans.
even though we can't hear or see these subliminal messages, below the threshold of our brains, our brains automatically decodes these messages. It's very interesting how so many things from ancient times till now, which points to something in the past, and is also evidently on the horizon. Since the fall of Adam and Eve to be gods in their own ambitions, mankind throughout history seem to have this notion that we too can become gods. To live forever, the fountain of youth. The search for superhuman beings. To upgrade ourselves, to become gods. To become more intelligent live longer, and so on. The thing is that there is already a divine encounter for such things. By trusting in Christ as Lord and Savior who died for our sins, that now we can become what we were not by nature, a child of God. A spectacular upgrade by the blood of Jesus that will ultimately lead us to eternal life in Jesus. Scientists are constantly searching to be gods. They are trying to get there. They invest millions of dollars into it. 